Welcome to the Libra Lounge with Keisha. I'm your host, Keisha, and I'm here with producer James. And tonight we are recording from, well, basically where everybody else is, from home. Um, normally you guys get to see me, but there was no way in hell I was going to put on makeup for this fucking podcast and then have to wash the shit out. Y'all know that's just not how I do what I do. Um, we hope everyone's doing well. Um, please don't get pregnant. You know, I know we're bored, but there's so many other things that we could be doing right now. You could be, you know, homeschooling your kids, teaching your dog how to do tricks. Uh, just, just, just don't do it to your child and say, you know what? You were conceived in the coronavirus. That just sounds bad. We got motherfucking cats running around here. We got dogs running around here. So if you guys hear anything odd, it is probably one of us trying to shoo away a goddamn animal or a human. Please move. So, producer James, how's it been staying in the house? How many days have we been in? I don't even know what I don't know what the day is. I don't know what the date is. I still have on clothes from yesterday. I think I went three days without a shower. Uh, I finally handled that yesterday, and I'm beginning to run out of leggings and warm-up pants and stuff. You know, you always think you have so many until you fucking have to stay in the house. And you're like, you know what? I think I need to add some more. Well, you wouldn't run out if you, uh, you know, did laundry. Well, you know, I don't do that. I don't do that at all. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I knew about TikTok uh, mostly because I have a 17-year-old daughter. Um, and every now and then I'll go on there. And I think some of the things that the celebrities do is pretty funny. But the one thing that the coronavirus has done, it has every white girl south of Michigan thinking that they can dance and rap. Bitch, you couldn't dance nor rap before the coronavirus hit, and you damn sure can't do it right now. And another thing that the coronavirus has exposed is that there are a lot of black people with zero rhythm. None, nada. Have you seen these TikTok videos with, you know, some reality TV stars, some uh, movie stars, singers? They can't dance at all and they're black. Like, they need their black cards revoked. Like, you can't get your black card until after the coronavirus is done. I don't even know what TikTok really is. It's I, basically I another form of social media where people just post videos. But this particular site will give you a challenge okay so for example i'm sure you all have heard this shit right here buku's of times here we go i don't want to hear that shit no more why was that is like that, no more that, it's a dance it's like a one two three step dance and you know everyone that's in your house gets in a line and they do it but is that as long as it is? That was like three seconds. No, that it was just a little bit longer. But they're not oh. long videos at all. They're they're time. And then here's another one. This is the one that has everybody thinking they can dance, that they are a video vixen, and all kinds of shit like that. Here, here we go. And here's the fucked up part about it. I like that song. I actually feel like Megan Thee Stallion wrote that song thinking about me. She like, you know what? She that bitch. She savage. She ratchet. She bougie. She classic. But I don't want to see this little dance. And it was Skylar that did this dance like 15 times. She was doing it in front of the baby. I think the baby was trying to figure out how to do the, uh, the dance routine. <laughs> or her sushi uh, singing the damn song. He knew all the lyrics now. It's just like, I'm over it. It, it, it this is what I don't understand. It's that people post things during this time that everyone's just kind of cooped up and of course everyone's going to be on their phones. Do people realize they're posting the same exact shit that everybody else in their timeline is posting? Like we, we get it. We all seen that meme. I don't want to fake laugh. Like this is my first time seeing that meme. Like to me, you should do a scroll through your timeline before you post the meme and make sure 15 other people hadn't done it. See, that would be great, but then you'd have one meme and one person, and that'd be it. It'd be over. But it would be funny. There'd be, well, but, but then it's not funny anymore after you see it so many times. Well, that's true, but nothing would ever go viral again if that was the case. But that one person, see, okay, so viral. Viral can mean a couple of different things. 
Because one time I thought I had went viral, and then I looked up the numbers, and I'm like, that bitch, try again. Because um, we had a video that had, like, it was up there in, like, the 12,000s or something like that. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, ooh, yeah. ooh, yeah. okay, we went viral. No, you got to get a lot higher than that to go viral. I don't even know if it starts at a million. I wonder where it's at now. No, it's not. You know what? They may have upped the number, but here's the thing. There's two ways to go. Your cat is chewing on the equipment, James. He's chewing on the mic pack. Ugh. Ugh. Continue. They just don't know how to act. They, no, they just, don't. just really don't. Okay, so you can go viral by having a video, and it has been viewed so many times. Right. Or you can go viral by having a video that has been shared so many times. Can you also do it if you do something that a whole bunch of people then copy? Like the ice no. bucket challenge, something like that? No, because by the time all the people have shared it or done it and mimic mimicked it, no one remembers who the fucking first person who did it was. Mm. No, it's just like, no, this video has been shared a lot of times. Therefore, you can say, only if you post a video and a lot of people share just your video. Okay. You don't get credit for it if other people mimic your video. They got to okay. share it and they got to view it. Okay. I might be wrong because some of that stuff I made up. I think I saw that. I think it's true. You know, you're supposed to fact check me on stuff like that. Well, I think I, I think a person can go viral, and I think like a thing, like a movement, can go viral. A challenge. I think. I, we're recording a show here. <laughs> Our daughter what, just walked in the room. What? What? Okay. What? How do you go viral? It can be okay. So, for example. Megan Thee Stallion challenge. Yes, that would be this one. Hold on, this one right here. We're we're, we're not on camera, so nobody nobody no, nobody I'm doing could it. see. I was but no one out. could see it. I okay, so tell us, young person, how do you go viral? Okay, so like I was saying, for example, Megan Thee Stallion. She mm -hmm. went viral for two reasons. She went viral for the selfie with her music and her movement called. You know, uh, being the hot girl, right? Embracing yourself, loving yourself, doing the best that you can, not letting any stupid person get in your way and block your blessings. And then she, recently, she, she, she talking about a boy. She ain't talking about one damn thing to have to do with going viral. She is talking about some little I'm boy. I'm talking about the movement, y'all. So I think she's incorrect. Megan The Stallion went viral because of one of her songs. Therefore, that video was viewed a lot. It was shared a lot. And then a lot of people clicked on her social media pages. Goodbye. I don't need you. I got this. I wasn't done, clown. Anywho, so moving right along. Uh, I just think it's funny that the minute you played music, the black child started dancing. And the animal started dancing. It, it's yeah, just like it's, everybody it's is like just, I, I, don't, I don't know. We just, we just got it in us. Dave Chappelle and John Mayer were that, right. No, that is how white people dance. No, no, I'm saying when music comes on, black folks start dancing. No. In that episode of Dave Chappelle, white person who doesn't remember it accurately, it was white people dancing. So no, every time John Mayer would play his guitar, there would be a white person who would just start dancing. No, but they went to different places and played different kind of music, like a white place, a Latino place, and then they went but to a barbershop. But it was the same kind of music, though. No, it was different music each time. Okay, anyway, moving on. All right, so another thing, everybody wants to fucking film their workouts. Oh, yeah. Like, the last thing I want to do when I'm sitting on a couch watching Netflix, Tiger King, and eating Starburst and drinking cappuccinos and eating Lay's potato chips is, I don't want to have to see a workout when I finally do check my phone. I don't want to see stupid. some asshole get healthy. I, I just, I, I don't. There's even this one person, I'm not going to say her name, but she's local. She has the audacity to start a thing for her page every day where people tune in and she shows them how to work out. First of all, if you're going to inspire anyone to work out, don't you need to be fine yourself? That's how I, that, I, I just <laughs> no. feel like you need to be fine. <laughs> no, no, I think, no, I think you need to be some level of fine. You really do. What it, because okay. you're not inspiring me. I want to see a person that is fine, and I'm like, okay, okay, if I do this, perhaps I'll start looking like that person. I don't want to see some person I don't know what the, what the hell they're doing. Like, I took gym class. I took gym class, and the way that she was doing her exercises was not correct. <laughs> I've worked out with personal trainers. 
she gonna, somebody gonna sue her ass because she was doing the stuff wrong. Someone's gonna do it and break an ankle or something like that. But I'm like, what gives you the certification to start a, 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 do you have to become a member? I don't know, you gotta like her page or something like that and work out with her every day. Well, but is she like teaching with that? Or is she just doing it? She wants other people to do it with her. Okay, so she's teaching. But I need you, again, to have some type of physical education diploma certificate, I, a piece of paper okay, that says a piece of paper that says you almost dare to get your certification. Something <laughs> this bitch don't have anything. You took night classes. Or yeah, something, something like okay. that. Yeah, I'd rather have like a ninety-nine year old old gym teacher get on that because you know what? At least that person knows what they're doing. <laughs> Plus, if they're ninety, I could probably keep up with them a lot better too. So that's what I'm saying. So basically, you want like the 90-year-old gym teacher with a dodgeball for no reason walking around giving yes. instruction. Okay. That's the kind of class I want to take. I mean, I don't, I don't know about you. Um, so <laughs> shall we talk about the lack of and the extreme fear of not having toilet paper and paper towels? I think we have to. As a public I service think that announcement. We have, people have talked more about toilet paper and paper towels than they actually have the actual virus. Most people don't even know what the fucking virus is. They really don't. They don't know what the symptoms are. Yeah, it they doesn't cause diarrhea. They, need, they just know that they need toilet paper By the and ton. paper towels to defend themselves against the coronavirus. <laughs> because that is how you stop the coronavirus. To defend yourself against it. Do you want to get that. mic'd up? Yeah. No. Yeah. Really yeah. No. Yeah. I'll tell you Maybe what. after a break we will. So okay. I, this is what I don't get. I, I can understand you going to the grocery store and stocking up on eggs, meat, milk, you know, things like that. But the toilet paper, you can wipe your ass with anything. You can just jump in the shower and clean your ass. The last thing that I'm thinking about doing a pandemic, is that what it's called? Yeah. It's toilet paper. Well, what's crazy is no one's like locked in their homes. Like no one's put in martial law. So... Your home life shouldn't be any different than what spring break was. No, I mean, it really shouldn't. Right? But like I said, it has been proven that toilet paper and paper towels will it will protect you against coronavirus. It no. has to be. That is why everyone is running out <laughs> of getting. They're fearful of not having it. It is the cure. The cure is within the paper towels and toilet paper. So the funniest thing is I go to the grocery store more often than I should. But we know. what's funny is you can tell people really aren't struggling because there's still tons of tofu and uh, like salmon and shit that people don't normally buy. Mm -hmm. They're not, you know, they're not terrified because they're not buying every kind of food. I tell you what, in order for me to have to eat tofu, I'm going to actually have to be in the hospital, in a hospital bed in a coma, and they are feeding me the tofu <laughs> through a feeding tube. Through a tube. That's the only way that I'm going to eat tofu. I have no interest in tofu. It tastes weird. It looks weird. I don't understand why you and Skylar like it. I, I've never ordered tofu. I, I, I don't know. But before we go to this break, I wanted to remind you guys to make sure that you are following us on Facebook and Instagram. Instagram? We have a Twitter page, but y'all know how I am about the Twitter. I just, I don't get it. You can only put so many words, and y'all know I have a lot to say. That I just, I, I don't get the Twitter. Maybe one day I'll find some young person who can operate my Twitter page for me. Um, not you. I don't trust your ass. Not at all. I'd rather go get, like, a little 13-year-old kid selling crack on the street corner to operate my Twitter page than you. Um, make sure you're following us on all social media and, um, oh, iTunes. So iTunes, iHeartRadio, but is it, I have a question. I have someone who couldn't find us on iHeartRadio. So is it iHeartRadio Podcast? It's iHeartRadio Podcast. And if you search for The Libra Lounge with Keisha, you'll find it. You'll find it. We're also on, also on the TuneIn app. And, you know, since you're stuck at home anyway, you can go back and watch all of our podcasts from the very first one. You can watch those on Facebook. You can go to our YouTube channel. Please subscribe and watch every single episode of the Libra Lounge with Keisha. We've got some great shows. We've got shows where I have interviewed some of Houston's hottest rappers. We've had some book authors. We've had some local politicians. We've had porn stars. We've had reality TV stars as well. So if you're bored and there's nothing else to do and you need a laugh and you don't want to talk to your husband or your kids, just watch all the episodes of Libra Lounge with Keisha. We'll be right back. 
Sassy Class Boutique is the hot spot for your fashion, beauty, and home decor desires. We celebrate women of all shapes and sizes with our trendy collection of regular and plus size clothing. Looking for the right accessories? We have upcycled Louis Vuitton handbags, vegan purses, and jewelry to add sass to your class. We also offer health and beauty products from salon quality hair care to cruelty free makeup. Our edgy home decor items will make you the envy of all of your neighbors. Sassy Class Boutique also offers custom items like shirts, hats, and other gifts for any occasion. All of our vendors are female-owned small businesses, and together we are Sassy Class Boutique. Located at 3709 Fatter Drive in Dickinson, Texas, 77539. Or shop anytime with us at www.sassyclassboutique.com. Welcome back to the Libra Lounge with Keisha. Before we continue, I wanted to remind you guys that you can become a patron of our show. Um, if you do that, you get lots of extra perks. Uh, Producer James, what are some of the fabulous things that they'll get if they pay us? Well, some of the fabulous prizes for our patrons are uh, there's discounts off of items at Keisha's Boutique, Sassy Class Boutique. Um, there's uh, merchandise deals. You can also interact with the show. You can actually have Keisha talk to you once a month and give give you her amazing, <laughs> let's say, Oprah on the cheap level of <laughs> insight and uh, uh, social assistance. <laughs> Oprah on the cheap is like Stedman. I mean, I, I'm <laughs> cool with being Stedman. Stedman is a damn good life. He doesn't have to do anything. Actually, if I die tomorrow, I want to come back as Stedman. All right, so, you know, it is very odd for everyone to be in the house with all of their family members for consistent days. Now, usually everyone has every, their family members in their house during the weekend. Then Monday, everyone goes back to their own individual, individual schedules. But now we're all stuck in the house together. So here's some of the stuff that's been going on here. Uh, let's see. I, I feel like by next week, my mom's going to have me cleaning floorboards, sewing buttons, pickling shit. Making a family tree. She's going to tell me I need to reread where the red fern grows. Here's the thing. I have yet to watch any newscast or broadcast about the coronavirus. I have not had to get on the interwebs and find out any information about the coronavirus. Do you know why? Why? There's because my much. mother, every morning, she has sent me at least 12 news articles about the coronavirus. I never, I, I haven't had to sit down and, and, and be educated by anything other than the stuff that she sends me. And you know how it is, if your mom sends you the shit, it must be true. I don't even try to verify it. No one keeps up with uh, current events like an old black woman. I, I agree, I agree. You know she reads the paper every day looking at the obituaries. She does, I'm like, who? My dad does it too. I'm like, who does that? They're like, you do it to see if anyone you know has died, I'm like, that seems really morbid to me. And it seems like you wouldn't know them that well if you had to find Yeah, out. wouldn't you have known before then that they died? You should have so. to go to the obituary to find out your friend passed away or your husband passed away. <laughs> I'm thinking you would know beforehand, but y y you know how it is. Um, so it's been interesting having her here and then having, of course, a 17-year-old here who has learned that there will be no prom for her because she's a senior. We're not even sure if there's going to be a graduation. Um, so yeah, that was that that all came to. At first, it was okay. At first, it was like, oh, okay, I'm cool with it. Long as I graduate, long as they don't send me something saying, hey, you still got to go back to school at the beginning of next school year for like a month to finish everything. So she was cool until one night. Oh, then oh. it's okay. Oh, ho, 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 ho. time for stage three of grief. Yes, it, 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 she came in and it never fails that she comes into our room. It's usually around nine o'clock, 9.30. We're in the bed, you know, chilling, watching a TV show, and she will come in and she flops on the bed. Yeah, it's Face funny. first, yeah. boo-hooing, crying. That is how we're like, and then we just look at each other like, are you going to handle this one? <laughs> I think I handled the last one. I mean, do, I, do we touch her? Do we move back? Do we... Do we buy her a puppy? What do, I'm like, this this is on you. Are we gonna tag team this one? How are we gonna how are we going to change this situation? But you know, in in something like that, your heart really breaks for your kid because 
you know about prom and graduation. I mean, I think you start learning about those things in what grade? I like you start looking forward to it at least by fifth grade. I think girls start learning early because yeah, they like, like, oh, what dress am I gonna wear? How am I gonna wear my hair? Who's I, gonna yeah. be my prom date? I, came up with cougars. I think girl. Okay, okay. I think girls, you know what? I have to be wow. honest with everyone. Okay, I've been keeping a secret. I'm gonna go ahead and confess. Skylar did not have a prom date. Okay. Oh, and wow. yes. Way so, to outer. So I created the coronavirus. So there was no prom, <laughs> so she wouldn't feel bad about not having a prom date. I think that's really a commitment to your child and trying to make your child happy. So that's what that's that crate of bats you sent to China and yes. said, taste this? Yes. I actually sent a bat. I put a little note in one of his ears and said, eat my I'm brain. Delicious. If you eat my brain, you will be all-knowing. Eat my brain, you'll live Forever. Say like Alice I did in Wonderland, that. a little yeah, uh, Yes, like, drink me. me. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I did that for you. Okay. So don't ever say I did nothing for you. I created a whole pandemic See, for I think, you. I think girls, by the time they're five years old, they already have prom, prom wedding, wedding kid, yes, all, all of that. All that's well known yeah. and they already start planning for it. Yeah. It's just, it's, it is heartbreaking. It's one of those things as a parent, you just can't fucking fix. There's no. nothing that you can do about it. But since then, I'm pretty sure between me, James, and my mom, we have probably spent enough money on her that is going to equate the cost of the dress, the shoes, the hair, the makeup, the limo. I think we spent that on our just feeling guilty. Like, you know. I think so. I think, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I think we're good. I think. Have should I heard? go ahead and cancel coronavirus? Coronavirus! <laughs> Ouch. In my Cardi B voice. <laughs> Yeah, please don't yell like that. That hurts. I do what I want. The dog's <laughs> chewing on the door. Oh. It's just, I don't, they said animals don't get coronavirus. Now, what are the symptoms? Maybe door chewing is symptom number one. He's not chewing. He's, He's licking, just licking the it. door. Hey, stop, dummy. Don't call him dumb. He is dumb. Look, he is not Keisha, dumb. Something that's licking a door. It that's might, how you spread virus. Stop that. You know what? That door might taste good. I'm going to taste it tomorrow. I'm going to taste it and see what it tastes no, like. Really? Get him? Because he's turning the paint off the door. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, you know, I don't know. You know, shit. a lot of parents are having to. <laughs> normally, you see your kid for a little bit in the morning, especially if you've got older kids. You see your kids for a little bit in the morning. They drive to school. Yeah. They do a check-in during the day. Then after school, you might see them. And then you go home, do dinner. Everyone, you know, is kind of getting ready for the next day. You catch up a little bit, and then you're done. Yeah, it's about, what about, about three and a half, four hours of actual interaction before you go to bed. But now we stuck with these motherfuckers for 24 hours. 20, not 24, 24 hours. Wow. And I've been stuck with James for 24 hours. I have been stuck with my mother for 24 hours. And in many ways... Me and your mom are basically like having two moms. Yeah, they have been cleaning, they have been cooking, they have been organizing. And I'm like, I'm, I, I text my dad checking on him, and he was like, you know, how, how's everything going? I'm like, well, you know, Mom and James, they're cleaning, cooking, and planning, organizing. I said, I'm not doing none of that shit. I'm not. I'm not going to do it. I, I refuse. That's not me. That's not who I am. That's not how Keisha rolls. How's it been being stuck in the house with me? It's been a pleasure. Hello, Therese. I love it. Every second of it. I detect lies and bullshit right now. I, no, it's, you're fine. I know how I can be kind of a pain in the ass because mm. I get, my OCD kicks in. Yes. Okay. How I many have times have you gotten something. cussed out? Ooh. Uh, we doing per day or mm -hmm. total? A total. About, I'd say probably about once every two, three days. Like yes. a good You have to just get cussed out. Yeah. Yeah. You go too far. You start buying shit that is unnecessary. Like mm. he bought um, an old astronaut suit off of eBay. <laughs> <laughs> I that was my he, hazmat suit. I think he ordered a blowfish. So we're going to have a blowfish arrive tomorrow. But we have no aquarium here at the house. So I don't know how that's going to go. Oh, I don't know if he's planning food. to eat it like the Asians do. Oh, no. We're eating. We're having fugu. I don't know. That's okay. puffer fish. Fugu. Yeah, I, don't, I, I, I don't know. So, yeah, he just starts ordering weird shit just like. I think I'm gonna have to take his debit card away, but I know he's memorized all the numbers, so I'm just kind of fucked in that aspect. Well, and part of me just wants to like 
buck the system and go like, stay in your house, fuck you, I'm going outside. Make yeah, he's safe. having a really hard time with being told that we are, on, what is it called, shelter in place? Yeah, I have a hard time with the government telling me much of anything. But. Here's my thing. You tell me that I am stuck in my 2,000 plus square foot house with cable, with, with food, size, with my king bed. size adjustable bed, and all the things that I love, I ain't mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that. But on a serious note, you know, I'm one of those people who really can't be going anywhere because they call us, what are we, immune? You're immune, immune compromised. compromised. Oh, you're, I'm not compromised, but you're, you're high risk. You're high right. risk. So I, I, I need to go ahead and let this out. Trump has been saying that they have been using a new drug to try to cure coronavirus. And that particular drug is, what is the, what is the real name of it? Oof. Hydro... It's hydroquinine or hydro something. Hydro yes, chloridine. but I call it Plaquenil. And I take yeah. that, I take, I take the dose that they are recommending every single day, and I have to take it every single day for the rest of my life. Which is for your lupus. Which is for but, lupus, which they're trying to, for some reason, they think it could cure coronavirus. Well, it's it's an anti-malaria. Yes, uh, it is. So and I, I take two anti-malaria drugs. Yeah. This is what I'm proposing to people. I'm going to sell my pills. I've got extra <laughs> $20 a pill. I think that's fair, right? That's, yeah, for something that basically is unproven, sure. It it's proven. Deal. Donald Trump said it on TV. It must be true. If you're interested in purchasing any of my anti-malaria medications, and I have two, one of them is the Mozo, if you want to look it up, and the other one is Plaquenil. I will sell them for $20 a pill, and he's recommending that you take two pills per day. Just, you know, send an email to LibreLoveRadio at gmail.com, and we can work something out. Producer James is looking at me like, you know that's illegal. No, right? it's, I think it's hilarious. It's the first time you've ever done something Donald Trump suggested. You know, I figure, I can't, you know, the boutique is closed right now. We are only taking online orders. I can eat that's just a little side hustle. Yeah. I, yeah, so. I think it's profitable. Why not make the most of this? Right. That fucking medicine makes my stomach hurt anyway, so I don't have a <laughs> problem with selling it to other people. Okay, so when we get back, hmm, what do we have on the agenda for when we get back? Ooh, maybe we can talk about some of the movies and the Netflix series oh. that we have watched. Oh my God, yes. Yes, yes, yes. We'll be right back. The Libra Lounge with Keisha. The Libra Lounge with Keisha. Welcome back to the Libra Lounge with Keisha. I hope during that break you went and washed your nasty ass hands for at least 20 seconds. I want to remind you guys that you can follow us on Facebook and on Instagram and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and subscribe to us on iTunes. And when you do that, make sure to leave us a rating, a five star rating. Um, and if you want to write something down, that'd be great. Look, don't be writing no bullshit because producer James is smart. He'll be able to find out how we can contact you and I'll be knocking on your door and be like, now what you say? You got something to say? Um, you can also find us on the TuneIn app, a laughable, laughable app and iHeartRadio podcast. Is that everything? That's everything. And yes. It's funny. You're talking about washing your hands. Mm -hmm. One of the funniest damn memes I've seen has been uh, one that our friend Oz posted. It said, wash your hands for as long as you would if you've been cutting jalapenos and about to go masturbate. Ooh. <laughs> That's Ooh. hilarious. I would most... I, I'm going to go ahead and recommend that if you're cutting jalapenos, don't masturbate till the next day. And even then, scrub under your nails. You're going to have a jalapeno. Believe me. Believe me. Producer James knows. Believe me. He's an expert at that. Yeah, yep. he can tell you any all, all the ins and outs. So I thought it was pretty cool that they um, are actually letting people watch some of the movies that are at the movie theaters at home. Well, they had to. I mean, they got to yeah, make, they gotta make some kind back, of money. Right? Yeah, I have to tell you, because you guys know we love going to the movies. It's pretty sad when you pass by the movie theater and there's no cars. Yeah, it's been no rough. cars at all. We decided to watch uh, The Invisible Man the other night, and it's actually really, really good. Pretty good. It's pretty good. It's one of those movies that I appreciate when they get straight to the point. I don't like when you got to do this whole build up. I want to know what the movie's about, and I want things to start moving, and it does. Um, it's basically. What was that other movie? Holl the, the, the Invisible Man is not new. It's been it's it was a part of a book first, correct? Well, I think yeah, way back when, and then there was a movie way back in the black and white days. The Invisible Man, and, uh, right? And then they Hollow did Man. Hollow Man, right. and they've had 
The Invisible Man was part of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Exactly right. And he's been part of a couple of other things. But yeah. this is, uh, this, you know, this one is a little bit scarier because I think that someone could totally do this. You know, her uh, boyfriend or ex-husband or whatever, he was very abusive. And he faked his own death to get back at this woman because she has been the only woman who has left him. And he just feels like he needs to get her back. Spoiler alert. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Anywho, no, so he has created this, um, he's created this suit that makes him invisible. Yeah, it's a, it's a, he was big into um, optics. Mm -hmm. So his suit basically is a great big 3D camera that shows you what's at every angle that you're not looking at. So it'll right. show you what's behind, what's to the side, and basically makes you invisible right. only because it's showing you everything that you would see if the person wasn't there. That led to producer James asking me, hey, so if you could be invisible, what would you do? And here's the honest to God truth. First of all, y'all know I'm nosy and y'all know I'm lazy. All I'm going to do is just really sneak in and listen to people's conversations and stuff like that. Um, I don't think there's anyone that I would kill. There's a, okay, wait, there's about five people I would beat their asses. But I don't think I would kill anybody. Would you? Ooh. Ooh. What I, well, here's the problem. I watch enough forensic files. Even if I was invisible, mm -hmm. I think they'd still catch me. I mean, I don't... Just because think about it. If you kill somebody, mm -hmm. you you doesn't matter if they see you or not. Invisible doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. You're still going to leave skin. Or you, you're still going to leave all the I stuff you so, would. I think so, because the body was completely covered from head to toe with the suit. Oh, if it's... Okay, if it's that same thing with the suit... Oh, I hate when you talking to somebody and then you ask them about exactly what you're talking about, and then you got to re-explain the shit. Oh, you're talking about the suit. Yes, we're talking about. Well, no, the you just suit. said if you were invisible, you didn't give me which invisible rules we're following. Halloween how about rules, the how about the, how about the the rules that we was just talking about? Okay, so the rules that were in the movie. Oh, I don't know. Even if you're invisible, you got to live with yourself, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. If don't nobody know I did it, I'm good. My conscience is clear. No fucking I'm only gonna worry there. about if I. I'm only gonna worry about if I think I might get caught. That's it. But yeah. I, like I said, I don't think I would kill anybody, but I would beat the fuck out of some people, big time. You could beat, yeah. You could. But take most of us want to be nosy. You could be, take a lot of revenge on people. Yeah, for sure. Is there anyone on your revenge list? Oh, many, and you know who you are. Why are you looking at me? I wasn't. I your wasn't. eyes was in this direction. Mm. I'm going to need you to say that comment again and face that way. I would blackmail so many people. Are you serious? I think, I think I'd have to. Blackmail like, them for what? Well, so if you could like follow them all the time, you mm -hmm. could see what little kinks or things they wouldn't want out there. If you wanted to blackmail somebody, you have every opportunity then to gather, what would you What would you blackmail them for, money? Um, depends on what they did. Like, I wouldn't blackmail somebody just to get paid. Mm -hmm. I would blackmail them if it was because they were fucking with me or mine, mm -hmm. and that was a way to make them stop. Oh, you got people that's trying to fuck with you and yours? Well, you never know. It can happen. Mm -hmm. Just let them go. Y'all just don't uh, know how to act. It's a fucking they zoo. They, 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 look at them. It's full WWE in here. We are trying to have a professional broadcast here, you assholes. So what you guys are hearing right now is a 10-and-a-half-year-old toy poodle and a one-year-old Sweeney fighting. I don't even know if it's fighting. It's like they're arguing, and then one of them pushes the other one. It's like Dennis the Menace and Mr. Wilson. It's like, I mean, they, it's, it's like, you know what it's like? It's like white kids at a prep school fighting. It's not real fighting. It's not like real fighting. It's, it's like nerds fighting. It's so it's not like a, street or hood fighting. So it's a push and a yell, and I'm going to call my father. And then they just go sit in their plush beds, and then it's done. And they're like, don't look at me. That's the kind of fighting that they do. I'm like, if you don't fight and make that much goddamn noise, y'all better be bowing up, punching each other, getting knives and razors out. See, they're done. They should fight. If you're going to fight, fight like pit bulls. Like, yes. where they have to, like, pull you apart. Where I got a, I got a place to bet. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anywho, but uh, we started watching today. This actually may go down as one of the best Netflix series of all time. 
At first, it was fire oh, for us. Gosh. And this, I think this may... This, oh, this top, this top fire in the first episode. Yeah. We're talking about Tiger King, which is the story of Joe Exotic. Let me tell you a little bit about Joe. Joe is openly gay. Very. Redneck. Very. A drug addict. Slightly. Slightly? Well, he wasn't. He, he said he wasn't doing drugs. He lied. <laughs> Hey, James, believe me, I've been around enough fucking he people. Has, he has more teeth than the rest of his staff combined. Yeah, because I think he uses their teeth to keep his teeth intact. <laughs> like, he loses a tooth, punches one out of his staff, and then puts it in there. Because <laughs> no one else has a mouthful of teeth, except for him and the guy who's like 19 years old. I and I say in about five more years, that guy's not going to have all of his teeth. Joe is also, he's very eccentric, and I... I'll go as far as to say he is talented. He's charismatic. You you mm -hmm. you want to see him. He's fascinating. And he also collects exotic animals. Big cats. Well, big I guess some other ones too. Yes. Definitely big cats. All right. I think we are on episode four, four or five, five. And I'm not, I think it's like six or seven. I think we're getting down to where we find out the reason he's in jail, even though we can kind of come up with it. But as you, <laughs> I don't even know how to start. So you've got Joe, who See, well, has okay. his exotic petting zoo, basically. Kind of sort of, yeah. yeah. Zoo, so, but a zoo. Yeah, so I thought the show was just going to be about Joe. Oh, but, but it's so much more. There's, yeah. It, it, there's so it's, many. Um, it, it follows the story. that There's some um, other characters who make up the reason why Joe is right now so infamous. Right. We've got a lady whose name is Carol Baskin, who claims that she um, wants to save all of the tigers and lions and other exotic cats from capti captivity. And she does that by putting them in captivity <laughs> with her. But it's okay if they're in captivity with her. Yeah, special then, captivity. Yeah, then we have the guy, the white guy with the gray hair that's long, who goes by a Buddhist name or well, some shit not, like it's, that. It's he not thinks Buddhist. He, it's, uh, what it's, is it? Hindu? It's yogi. It's, he's it's, a yogi. Yeah, he's a doctor of mystical science. Yes. And, uh, it's, um, and he's a fucking it? cult leader Bob and a Rising pervert, or... okay? He, he, he... Now, I will say, out of all of the zoos, and I, I use quotation marks when I say zoos, he has a better one from when you're an outsider looking in. Yeah. But then when you go inside, this motherfucker is crazy. Hey, they're he, all he, crazy. It's, it's a little bit of, he is a little bit of sister wives. Ooh, and a little bit of Koresh. David Koresh. Yeah, a little Koresh. And then a little bit of Hugh Hefner. Yep. Yeah, he, he has all these girlfriends and... Um, yeah, in order to get to the top tier of his ladies list, you basically have to fuck him, okay? Yeah. And he feels as though when his penis touches you, you become, it's a better person, more worthy. Yeah, there's a word, know. you become enlightened. He Enlightened, yeah, yes. Enlightened. Because dick can enlighten a person. I don't know about his dick, because I don't think his dick can enlighten not one thing in my life at all. Which, then, you, yeah. then you have the guy who used to be a big drug king, who was sentenced right. to 100 years in prison, won his appeal and only was in there for 12 years. He has a zoo. You know what? He's the only one that I think I would like actually work for. Yeah, I think so. I, th I think he's like, he's like learned his lesson not to yes. be really fucked up. So you've got Joe and Carol who fucking beyond Ooh. hate each other. Like it is a level of pettiness and revenge and obsession. It's, it's comical. It is comical because Carol, you know, we she, think she's this great person. Oh yeah, exactly. And then yes, we get yeah. to episode four. Yes. And we learn about her missing millionaire husband. That bitch killed that man. I'm telling y'all right now. I don't know how she did it, but she killed him. And I'm kind of intrigued. Well, here's she the got great away thing. with murder. Well, here's and got a great millions thing. and millions of dollars. Here's a great thing, and I think why Joe might be your twelfth spirit animal. I because, think he is he because y'all know I was a gay so... man in the former life. Petty. Oh, he's pe he, he actually found a way to get copies of Carol's diary, and he would read pages from her diary. On he his, even uh, went as far as to write a song because he is a very good singer. He can sing. He wrote a song called "Here, Kitty, Kitty," Made all him, yeah. about how Carol killed her husband and fed all of his meat to her 
uh, her cast. That's the song. But that's the but the video they is make even a better. Music video. He has a music video with yes. a woman who looks so much like Carol. <laughs> it makes you say, wait, did they make up and decide to collab? Or are they doing like a Dre and Big Frida kind of thing? I mean, is this a collab? And then you realize it's not her, but that is how much she looks like him. She is going around with what do you call those things? Tongs. Tongs. Feeding different pieces of meat to different lions. The whole time Joe's singing this so over hard. top of it. No, me. he's not just singing. He is singing with a shirt that has been made into a reverend uh, kind of thing. He's got the white cloak. He's got the black hat. And he is telling you step by step how Carol killed her husband. The best part of this whole show is every one of these people are fucking nuts. And yes. every one of them calls the other one crazy. crazy. That's the greatest. Now, okay, so let's go back to all the people who work for Joe. They're all men except for the girl who looks like a man. But ex-cons as well. Right? Yes, and they live in trailers with like no running water. They mm-hmm. uh, they're paid like hundred and twenty-five dollars a week. Yep. Uh, but they do have a place to live. They have they have food. They eat all the meat that Walmart is getting ready to throw out. Oh, this is crazy. So yes. When you have, he, he said he had 227 cats, mm-hmm. right? So, and it, he said it takes about $3,000 a year per Wait, cat. Wait, well, now, now let's, Joe says that he can feed a lion with $3,000 a year. Now we got the yogi cult leader pervert guy over there. Said, he says it's $10,000 10, right. because I'm sure the meat he gets to his lions has to be in like him. So what Joe does, which is great, is A, there's a feedlot that gives him dead cows. Yes. Often, like the ones that just die on the lot. And then he gets a truck full of expired or returned or like not purchased Walmart food. Yes. And he his people literally pick through it like yeah. they were and like, like they're bear, shopping. Like bears at a dump. Yeah. And it's then they insane. take us on a tour of some of the trailers. I'll tell you what. Oh man. I would rather live in I would rather Put on that meat suit that Lady Gaga wore that one time to the Grammys <laughs> and live in one of the cages with one of the lions than to live in that trailer, any of those trailers. Well, that it tells was you, disgusting. Well, that tells you how fucked up these people really are. Yeah, they had they probably had nowhere to go after well, they got done with their prison stay. Well, it's not that. I mean, if you make sure that your animals live better than the humans yeah. who are working for you, yeah, and they praise that's a them. Problem. Like each, here's the crazy part is that each one of these people... They are so charismatic that they treat people kind of like shit, but the people want to be around them. And they here's the thing. The people who work for Joe, they work 12-hour days outside with lions and tigers and bears. And I think I saw some goddamn monkeys over oh, there, Oh, there were too. monkeys. And big alligators. And then, not to mention, they are working with Joe. It's that, it's that cult charisma. It re- and they it's all cult charisma. have it. Um, yep. So what were we saying? We were saying how much it costs to feed mm. a lion per year. And then where were we going from there? Well, I think we were just getting into um, just oh the girl, the girl, oh, the, the, girls, the girl, yeah. the girl who yeah. I'm sure I I think she thought she was conveying to the audience that she was a man as well. But wow. I will say she, oh, you know what? We got to put her on the list of people who still have all their teeth. But you know what? She doesn't have a fucking arm. An arm. <laughs> Because the tiger what ripped tiger. it the fuck off. Yes, so this is one of the days that they're open. They've got people in the gift shop. They've got people doing tours. And this girl just decides she's going to stick her arm in the lion cage. And it, 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 it ripped it off. Like it just, yeah. Yeah, it they had to tell all up. the guests to go. But guess what? This is how devoted she is to Joe. So people were getting upset because Carol was all over this one oh, saying, yeah. you know, that Joe's trashy. Um, what else? How else does she describe? Oh, it's an unsafe fake place. It's, yeah, yeah. So this was all. It was made national news. This bitch. Okay. The doctor told her, "Look, we can save your arm. It's gonna be by about two years of intense. Uh, what is it? What is it when therapy they do and therapy reconstruction. and reconstruction? Yeah. Or and it's gonna be very painful. Or we can amputate it. Amputate it is what she said." So after being in the hospital for seven days, guess what she did? She went right back to work. Back to work. 
You know with why? The cats. Because she didn't want anyone to think that Joe had done anything wrong. There was anything wrong with his zoo. Nothing like that. That is how that committed is, these people yeah, are. That's that. That's cult. That's cult yeah. devotion, right there. Because the first place that I would have went was to a lawyer's office to be like, "Uh, how can we sue this motherfucker right here?" I'd have gone home, gotten a gun, killed that cat. And then make it my mission to shut the whole place down. If it took my arm off. Yeah. So what we kind of know is that Joe is currently in prison for I'm gonna say alleged. It seems like it's gonna be for allegedly doing a murder for hire with Karen. Karen. Carol. Carol. Which well, at first it was like, dang, that's fucked up. But then you see how fucking horrible of a person Karen really is. Carol. Carol. <laughs> Okay. She she reminds me of a Karen. She rides around. She <laughs> rides around on her bike with her uh, flower crown on, and she's got cheetah print, leopard print on. She got ocelot hair on her. Uh, all kinds. She even has like a, a damn little tail because she thinks she's a cat. To so you, she, she's a total Karen. She, she, to me, she's a Karen. She is a Karen. She, and then she killed her. Husband. I am convinced that she killed that man. I really yeah. am. So when you. Because we haven't gotten to where Joe's actually charged right. yet. But if you read his story, yeah, this guy, he, yeah. But he's he one of those coming. people that, you know, I could have probably watched him shoot Karen, Carol, Katie, Carol. Cayenne, whatever, <laughs> Cayenne. Her name, whatever her name is, Cat and woman. still be like, but I don't want Joe to go to prison. He's oh, just, yeah. you, he, he captivates you. He's he's brutally honest, which I like that. And he's fucking petty as hell. He's a but showman. He's like, but, he's, but he's talented. Yeah, he really, he really is a showman. He really is talented. Um, so, yeah, I'm thinking the next episode is going to give us more details on the whole murder for hire thing. And um, I, I really can't wait to see. But all of this is current. This is ongoing right now. Oh, and that's the best part. I don't think part. he's been sentenced. I don't even know if there's been a, has there been a trial yet? He's been He's sentenced. in jail. He's, he's been well, sentenced? He's been sentenced as of January. But again, what, this is... What is his sentence? Well, I know he was looking at away? 79 years. No, he's 22 years. So he has been sentenced? He has a trial and everything? Yeah, that happened. So he got so he got uh, convicted of murder for hire mm -hmm. because he tried to get a FBI guy to be the hitman. Mm -hmm. uh, spoiler alert. Yeah, Joe, you kind of don't want to hire an FBI agent. And this might break your heart. He was also convicted of... Uh, breaking the Endangered Species Act law and the Lacey Act, which on the Lacey Act, basically he killed five cats for to make reason? room for a bigger one. Okay, but here's the thing. That seems to be a common thing that all of them have done. Well, and that's part of the... Right. They're crazy and, and, I and awful. And I think that Karen... Oh, Carol. Carol. Carol with a K... Um, I think she I, she's done some shady shit too. And then the other guy who's the yogi, oh, Doc one of his Handel. um one of his girlfriends, which we haven't got the full story of how she escaped, but she escaped and she revealed a lot of secrets. And she said the same thing too that once he was done with a cat, oh, that, was, that yeah, was cat done. would disappear. Yeah. Yeah. And they she wasn't able to find out. None of them know what ha happens right. to the cats. Yeah, it and looks then, like um, that, that they all do that. I don't think the guy who is well, I think the he, Latin guy who was yeah. the ex-con, I don't think he does that. I, I think know. he's the most legit, but I'm sure we're going to find out a little bit more about him, too. I don't know, because here's the problem. The, the Endangered Species Act mm. means you can't sell, trade, or anything. Mm. So these people... They were, do, they were doing that with each other. Well, they were, yeah. and then it became illegal. That's mm -hmm. other, one of the other things that Joe got convicted of. Mm -hmm. But here's the problem. These people, you can't sell, you can't get rid of these cats mm -hmm. in any legal way. Right. But you yet... Part of your business model is for people to come and interact with, with kittens it, it, yeah. and young ones. Yeah. So, what are you going to do? Are you going to keep growing them all the way till they're till you have a thousand? I mean, it's a it's like a puppy mill. You constantly have to have a, a kit. You constantly have to have a baby. You gotta always have kittens. Right, because those are the only animals there that people can interact with. And I'm not going to lie. How many and, times did they show something like I want to do that? Oh yeah, well they're selling the interaction. Yes, I would. So, I would pay to inter. Actually, I did that when Skylar was about six years old, seven years old. Um, they had at Mall of the Mainland, um, which is like the dead mall here, where you could go and you could hold and take pictures with. It was a lion, a tiger, and a bear. Do you remember that, Sky? 
Yeah, and it was the cutest thing. It really was cute. But it's the same thing that Joe was doing that Carol was very strongly against. But right. he would say that sometimes they would go to a mall and you could do the interaction with the lions, the tigers, and the bears. They would make ten to twenty thousand dollars. Absolutely. Hell, I'm about to go find. I mean, me, I'm yeah. Go find me a lion. Shit, I'd, I'd I'd take our cat. And I wonder paint if them we stripes. could do that with our animals. Yeah, paint some stripes on them. Yeah, something like that. Mini cats. All right. So when we get back, we're gonna have the bitch please of the week. We want to thank you guys for joining us tonight for the Leave Alone with Keisha. I was just telling producer James during the break that last night, um, I wasn't meaning to, but I caused like a big ruckus within a family. One of our high school friends posted something about Democrats, and I made a comment. I was like, well, I'm a Democrat, and I'm not sitting at home waiting to collect the check. I'm not blaming the Republicans for the coronavirus and things like that. And you, and you know me, I can debate with someone and then it's all funny and we're making fun of each other and it's all in good. So he and I were going back and forth, but jokingly and all of that. So I guess someone who knows his family uh, was very upset that he's a Trump supporter. Mm. This particular guy is half Hispanic, half white. Uh, she was like, you don't know what your ancestors went through. Your ancestors were all illegal and had to cross that border and da-da-da-da-da. Whereas he's like, uh, nope, my grandparents were born right here in the USA, even though they are Hispanic. Right. So they're going on and on, and it's, it's, it's okay. And I'm cracking jokes like, well, ooh, I'm watching <laughs> this like, uh, the, you know, the Michael Jackson meme where he's in the movie theater eating the popcorn. I'm oh, like, yeah, I, yeah. I'm watching this like that. So me and him are laughing about it. But then around 10 o'clock last night, his mom's sister got on there. At oh first, I thought she was coming to his defense. She's like, hey, Aunt Sherry here. What's going on? Let's not use names, please. I didn't use the person's name. Okay, go ahead. Um, and she, from there, went off. All the way left? She, oh, it could not have gone more left. She went into how you basically think you're better than the rest of my family because you're half white. Ooh. You don't want to be Hispanic. You're doing everything you can. And our, he, she's like, you're only here because two illegal immigrants fucked. Uh, then she goes, <laughs> this is like, this is her nephew. Then she's like, fuck you. My kids and me, we're not staying all to be all high and mighty. We're not favored like you and your brother and the rest of your family because y'all, your dad's white. Then she starts putting all this Trump stuff, and then she's like telling him, go fuck yourself in the ass. And then she goes, you know what? I'm done with you. We're not family. You can't even come to my funeral. On oh, Facebook. On Facebook. For all the world For to see. For all the world to see. Wow. So I'm like, uh, dude, are you okay? Because that went <laughs> all the way left. <laughs> He's like, yeah, it kind of did. He's like, oh, no, me and you are all good. So we were inboxing one another, said, is that your mom's sister? Because I can kind of see the family resemblance. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, look, everybody's got that one crazy ass aunt. I said, I had, we had the one crazy ass aunt too. I said, she even shot my uncle. So, you know, we, every family, I'm probably going to be that crazy ass aunt in this generation. But I was just like, people are so sensitive about politics right now. Like you literally can't say, oh, I'm a Democrat or I'm, I'm a Republican and have a debate. Well, you can't say you're a Republican. Like, that's right. a problem now. You know. I mean, it is what it is. I'm a Democrat, but then if I sit down and answer a lot of questions, you would think that I was Republican. So I, I'm in the middle of it, I think. Yeah. You know, but uh, I'm sorry. I hope y'all whole family don't get divorced. I hope that whenever the coronavirus is gone, <laughs> y'all can all keep together and have a nice little family reunion. Because it, she, I, believe me, I'm giving you the nice version of oh, how I'm, it went down. I can imagine. It, it was pretty bad. Uh, I was just like, she made an ass of herself so much to the point that her kid called my friend the next day oh apologizing God. and saying, just ignore her. We're so sorry. Uh, do you need anything? And I mean, basically she seems as, uh, okay, I get it. She was upset that her family member who is half Hispanic is a Trump supporter, okay? And then yeah, it, it goes all into the border and all, you know, the borders yeah, and all of that stuff. Disarmament? But my disagree. thing is, I'm like, oh, there has to be something more deep-rooted th than this, because she called out the fact that you basically think you're white. <laughs> it, it was pretty bad. So anyway, wow. um, the bitch please of the week. 
you know, being trapped in a house with your family. I, I've seen a lot of bitch assness the last, what, seven days as a man? I don't know if it's been seven. It may be closer to It ten. feels like it's been 12 years of fight. <laughs> it does. I, it really, really does. But the bitch please of the week has to go to Donald Trump. And, it, and, you know, and he doesn't get it for the reasons that you guys probably think I'm awarding it to him. But he gets it for this one statement that, I'm not going to lie, it's pretty fucking funny. <laughs> but then you realize this is the leader of the free nation. This is the president of the United of the States. This is Air Force One right here. This is a person whose name is going to be by Barack Obama, uh, Kennedy, Abraham Lincoln, George Washington. He's up there with them. And this is one of the statements that he made. My fellow Americans, people are dying that have never died before. People have been dying before. Wait, wait, you can die a couple of times now? Is that a thing now? You can die like three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times? Is that what he's saying? Like, do you have to die first before you really die? Is I mean, it, do, you do, like a, do, do you do like a preview of your death? Do you die just a little bit and say, well, this is what I experienced, and then you can really die? Is that how you do it? You got to die a little bit, report what happened, and then get permission to go ahead and die. I mean, he's technically right. That's some stupid shit. That is something that I would say. That is something me or Cardi B would say. say Can you see one of us saying that? Everybody who dies has, has never, never died, died before. before. Yeah, I mean, so I don't feel as though the president of the United States <laughs> should interrupt whatever TV show was on to let us know that people are dying that have never died before. Somebody told me, or I heard it said, him speaking is like watching a fifth grader give a book report it's who it. didn't read the who book. Who didn't read the, he just read the back cover of the book. <laughs> he read just that part. And then he looked at his friend's book report, took a couple of notes off of that one, but his friend didn't read the book either. That is what it's like when he gets up there and speaks. People really, when he gets on TV and speaks, no one's going to watch to get information. Everyone is watching to see what the fuck is he going to say now? Now, now he's saying that he expects for all of this coronavirus to be done by Easter. Well, I talked to the Easter Bunny. He said that shit ain't true. He said that he's going to continue to practice social distancing and fuck them kids, fuck them eggs, fuck them chicks, all of that. I, may, you know, oh, wait a minute. Easter is the resurrection of Christ. Ah, uh, yeah, we're fucked. <laughs> Totally fucked. If that's what that's we're hoping somebody, on. Wait, that is the true definition of somebody who has died and then died again. Well, he yeah, died before. I guess so. Oh, I guess so. All right, you guys. So <laughs> Jesus. make sure you're keeping up with us on Instagram and on Facebook. We, are, we have really been trying something different with those two. I've been posting a lot in the Insta stories and on the stories on Facebook. Um, so... Make sure you're watching us. Let us know what you're doing. If you see something that you know we like or we'd like to talk about on the show, DM us. Or you can email us at LibreLoungeRadio at gmail.com. We will talk to you guys next week. Be safe. Stay inside. Don't listen to any information that intern of the CDC, James Owens, tells you because he's just on a different level. And wash your hands and don't beat the shit out of your kids. We'll see you next week. Be safe. It's the Lieber Lounge. The Lieber Lounge. Ooh.